Welcome to our virtual um, learning session today based on embedding maths and English within the vocational area. What I'm going to do today is plan a generic lesson that you can withdraw some elements of this for your vocational sessions. First of all, we're going to go on to Dimmons um, Estate Agents, and that's, this is based in Gosport. Um, as a learning resource, as a virtual um, kind of platform that they are putting out there at the moment. Okay, so the kind of skills that you can embed from a resource as easy as this is things like fact and opinion. Okay, so it may say spacious drawing room. To you, obviously, that's opinion, okay, because it might not be spacious to other people. So it might be drawing in those facts and opinions um, of this uh, house description. Also, it, you can go into the descriptions further and you've got your elements here where you may want to even then look at English techniques such as looking at your basics, your similes and your metaphors. These are the things that we do in English that the student will need to know for exam purposes. And there's lots on there. It might be that your adjectives come in, your verbs, all those types of skills. What estate agents have done uh, recently, obviously due to uh, the, uh, the lockdown, is they have put virtual learning, uh, virtual learning, sorry, virtual tours online so that you can go into the house, okay, and see what you're buying. This is a really good way to kind of link those uh, descriptive writing skills. So, if you just want to move it along a little bit, Lorna, and then we can have a little look. So it's actually going in the house. You could get them to describe it. You could get them to use those senses, okay? You could then look at those English te techniques again, um, which is a really good way. You may want to link that personally to your vocational areas. I know that one of our members of our staff at the moment, Kathy, has done virtual tours on cars and made a comparison and then created reports from it. So it's a really good tool to use. Okay, extending this further, if you're stuck of what to do, um, you could maybe then think to yourself, you could do a descriptive writing task, your dream house. Popping that in, um, in the toolbar comes up with many resources here that you don't necessarily have to create yourself, they are there online. We need to do this, again, in English, because we have to, for question five, do a, you know, be familiar with a lot of formats, okay? So you could do something along these lines. I know we have done previously for Build, they've had uh, watched a clip of Grand Designs and what they've done is they looked at the materials being used and created a report. If you're stuck on reports, a real guru we use across the English team is Mr. Bruff. I have mentioned him previously. And so what he does, then it doesn't really matter where it's for. He will talk through the exact format and how to go about this in relation to our exam board. So again, it's a really good tool. Okay, any other questions, please feel free to email me. I'm going to hand you over to Lorna. You go back on to Dimmons. Okay, so I'm going to have a look at maths and how you can embed um, some maths into this kind of activity. So, for example, we've got a floor plan here. There's loads of different things we can do here with the floor plan. We can look at angles, that's part of functional skills and it's part of GCSE curriculum as well. So, you can identify what a right angle looks like. We've got a diagonal wall here, so we can talk about whether that's an acute angle or an obtuse angle. What does the opposite angle become? Um, it's not so much about you teaching them the skills, it's about you refreshing those, reminding them of things that we've done with them in class already. So we could also talk about the proportion of the room, the ratios of rooms, you know, how many bedrooms are there to how many bathrooms. Just using the terminology of ratio will make them think, oh, I remember doing that last week with Lorna, how can I reflect upon that on here? Um, we can make comparisons, you could talk about um, larger, smaller, 
use greater than, less than symbols. You know all of this. If you were discussing this with a student, you'd be talking about this. It's just thinking, could I relate that to math somewhere? It doesn't have to be adding and subtracting and things like that. Um, that's brilliant, Emily. If you could go to the description of the house. Thank you. So looking at the details of the house, We've got loads we can talk about here. We've got room sizes. So I talked about describing those. If you go down to where they've got the details, perfect. So I know when you buy a house that I always tell the students we should deal in centimetres and metres because it's the 21st century and we're dealing with metric now. But actually, I only know room dimensions in feet and inches, which is ridiculous. But we could have that conversation. They all know their height in feet and inches, but they know other things in metres and centimetres. So talking about the types of measurement, you could then look at converting between feet and inches and centimetres and metres. Um, so that's a really good idea. If you could scroll down a little bit further, Emily. And also giving them an idea, just down to where we've got the EPC, thank you. The other thing that you could do um, is talk about planning a room. So thinking about the dimensions of a room, what you could fit in that room, and scale drawings is another perfect one. And we do a lot of scale drawings because it's really popular in functional skills exams that they ask about drawing a, an actual size house onto a piece of square paper and they give you a scale factor. This is the EPC voting, something that I'm sure a lot of students wouldn't know about. It's a great opportunity to bring in those wider skills and thinking about um, you know, global warming and money and what makes an efficient house. So you can look at the scales on here, explain the criteria to them. They need to understand criteria in functional skills and GCSE. They're asked to put data into a table or a chart and they would need to understand if you're going to buy a house, for example, and you want it to have a good energy efficiency rating, it needs to be an A or B. If you gave them a few of these from different houses, they could make those comparisons, they could put that data into charts. Um, so it's just looking for naturally occurring opportunities where maths may be there and highlighting it really. The appointment sheet as well. You know, should we get them to fake being an estate agent for a day and they've got to book in their appointments? I've done this with my hair and beauty group previously where they've had a blank um, beautician sheet and a blank hairdresser sheet. I've given them appointment cards and they've had to slot them in. Um, and show how to manage time. Time's a massive one that you could fit in any lesson. Um, talking about, it's gonna take us three quarters of an hour, or how many minutes is that? Might sound really obvious, but I would say a good, probably a good 40% of our students can't tell the time on an analog clock. So anything you can do within that time is gonna be hugely beneficial. Um, and a bit like Emily was saying for the English, or very similar to what Emily was saying, if you could go to the Court Maths website, um, if you wanted to look for more information and you wanted to get more in there, I think it's a tab, if you go to the internet, oh, that's it, perfect. Um, Corbett Maths is the website that we refer a lot of students to. Um, it's run by a woman who's a bit obsessed with resources, she admits it herself. It's all alphabetically ordered. There are videos on every different topic you could possibly think of. So if you're delivering a session, you think, I wonder if I could squeeze some ratio in this, but I'm not quite sure how that would look. You could watch that video, it might be five minutes, and you might think, oh, actually, I could bring that into my lesson. Um, it's not about getting you to do our job, it's just thinking about where you could fit some of this in. Um, and finally, if you go to the last slide of the PowerPoint, if you wanted more ideas and more help with this, then you can come and see Emily and I. We're, we're here to help you out. We've had other staff members over the year pop over and say, um, from an observation, I'd, I'd like to be able to include more maths and English in my lessons, how can I do this? Um, it might just be something that you're really interested in supporting your students with. It's going to be a tricky year, see if we can get anything else in. Was there anything else you wanted to add? Thanks for your time.